Hello everyone, I am Adam Lawson. I'm a product developer here at BMC. And today we have a small presentation available for you guys for progressive web application development in Helix ITSM. First thing I wanted to go over today is the layout of PWA and kind of how a PWA form might actually work. This is a basic graphic, helps you visualize the outline of a PWA view. And we have a couple of key points here. First, you have container panel holders. That's the red outlined item. You also have sub panel holders. That's the yellow outlined item. You have section panel holders. Uh, these are the black outline items. This is what you will work with more often. So be, be aware of those. And you also have fixed panels. Those are the blue options. The outline, the, the red outline you see here, the container panel holder is a object in the outline hierarchy. It's the top object and it is what consists 100 percent of the page so anyone that's done responsive design work before uh you you kind of have an idea of how that would work but that that red outline is 100 percent of the the screen real estate that you're allowed to occupy inside of a web browser the yellow outline is a section panel it's the second object in a outline hierarchy it takes up 100% of the width on a page. And as you can see on the mobile section, it is represented as a tab in the mobile page. So if you have a, a lot of different types of data that you might want to present all at once on a desktop, but not exactly all at once in mobile, that's kind of something you might use. For the most part, in our design, we're going to use a section panel holder. It's the black outline item. Usually, you'll have many of these, and this is going to include your, your fields and your tables and objects like that. Um, th this is, like I said, where we're going to spend most of our time when we're, we're doing PWA development. Every ITSM application has three elements. An SV create, which is specifically used for creating records on the form, you know, things like CTM people, AST, change and availability, which is your outages, change infrastructure, known error, problem investigation, work order. Those kinds of forms have this kind of uh, an outline. And you can see the incident option here on the screen. Uh, we're going to keep on going here. We also have SV view as well. Now notice this is very similar to the last screen that you saw, but it has a different reality about it. This is, this is specifically used for viewing an existing record. You know, users go to create records. They might not always know all the different information. You know, I don't need you to tell me uh, certain things when I'm creating it uh, because maybe I already know those things. I already know the reported source. Or I already know the reported date. Maybe I don't. I mean, I'm just uh, saying that, that there's differences there. And then you also have the SV edit view as well. This is obviously for editing an existing record that already is, is there on the form, and it has its own view. Now notice that the view and edit views are very similar. Uh, just one is editable, one is not. There are a few small differences. Notice the, the plus symbol next to the customer field. That allows you to expand that and you know search a little bit more in depth. It, it just gives you a different feel, and, and this is kind of what customers have and users particularly have come to expect out of all enterprise applications, and we're just kind of conforming to that here. There are exceptions, though, and one exception is our uh, SHR Relate Item Search dialog form, and this form is specifically used for relating existing ITSM tickets to a other ITSM ticket. For example, you might be impacting a or, or, or setting a impact analysis for your your change request, and you might you know relate an asset to that. But you also might relate an incident or a problem to your change request. This form would be used for that. It's not designed with a create, view, and edit option like some of these other forms that we've looked at. So it's very important to realize that while we do have the create, edit, and view hierarchy that we that I just spoke about as all rules of life rules are rules they're not absolute uh, there are exceptions to that and you know this is just one of those forms that has an exception you can see it has a table on it and it really only serves that one purpose to create the relationship it's not going to 
be doing, you know, three or four different types of incident requests or, you know, whatever. It doesn't do that. It, it does this one purpose. It's very specialized. So it has a very specific design that is only used occasionally. Before we continue, though, I do want to go over a couple more things. Uh, progressive views are views. They're not forms. So you'll hear me say progressive forms, and and, and I say it, and everyone says it, but that, that's just uh, slang. Understand that when we say progressive forms or progressive views, we're talking about the same thing. They're all AR system forms, but only the views can be progressive, not the forms themselves. So keep that in mind. Dev Studio does not render at PWA in PWA. So when you're doing development, it's going to look like classic mid-tier development. But at runtime, when mid-tier actually executes everything it, it needs to do and, and presents to you a graphical interface, it will be shown a, as we're seeing. And um, I also want you guys to kind of notice my layout in Developer Studio. Everyone's layout is different. Um, that is something to, to keep in mind. But you're going to have different emphasis when doing your development. And uh, I, I'm going to try to show some of that to you guys here today as well. And so just feel free to play with your own layouts. All right, so we got Dev Studio open up here, and uh, as I was mentioned before, we have this uh, different perspective in uh, Developer Studio. Notice how my outline is here instead of up in the top right-hand corner. My properties, instead of being down here in the bottom right, uh, they're, they're kind of bigger because we're going to use them a lot more in this outline. Also, you, you won't see me using my actual preview window that often, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and open up HPD Help Desk here. It is currently unmodified. I just deleted the overlay that I had on it. So that way we made sure that everything's out of the box the way it's supposed to be. And as mentioned before, we have our SV Create, Edit, and View views. These are all three progressive views. When we open them up, I'm actually going to go ahead and expand this so we can take a look at it real quick, see what it looks like. You'll notice you have your statuses and your impacts and summary and description and and uh, all kinds of other fun fun things here. This is obviously the create view. So you have, you know, where you'd put a template in and, and all kinds of other fun stuff. But it, it's not rendered like a PWA form would look like or PWA view. Um, it is showing you just like it would, it, you know, if it was a classic mid-tier form. doesn't matter because the rendering is done at runtime. So that's very important to keep in, in play. So what we're going to create today is actually a, uh, I'm going to go and slip over here to the view. We're going to create three fields that are going to represent hours spent working on an incident ticket. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and first minimize this. Um, and you look at our outline here, some, something really quickly you can do just to expand your outline and kind of see where you're at. Click on any field and boom, your outline gets expanded and you can see here, and I can just minimize this, and I can see, oh, here's my main panel holder. You see the Z2PH for panel holder that holds all of these panels, and you can see, oh, here's my details panel, and what do you know, the details panel, you know, reported day, incident type, description, things like that, and you look at your assignment panel, oh, See here, your assignment panel would have, so this is, you can't see this right now, but it'll probably have some kind of assignment option uh, assigned to me or something like that. All kinds of fun stuff here that you are able to look at and, and play with and, and, and see. Once again, not rendered in PWA, classic mid-tier rendering, but all the fields will eventually be rendered in PWA. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take this panel holder, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the field to a view overlay, just like we always do. Let Dev Studio do that real quick. All right, it's done. And uh, from here, we can go ahead and right-click this, and we're going to add a new panel. Uh, it creates a new panel down here at the bottom, and we can see that uh, it moves down here, and you can see a nice black trim right here where our panel holder is placed. Notice how it's just inside of our red panel holder and our yellow panel holder, just like we talked about before, where this you know, signifies the screen, this will signify a tab uh, and the width of the page. Um, we're going to go ahead and rename this real quick. We don't need this to be uh, uh, anything particularly special. I'm going to actually, actually, that's display. Let's take that away. We're going to say Z2PL for panel, 
SV underscore custom hours. And that's what we're just going to call it because we're building this hours application. And I could also change this to 200 if I really wanted to. I'm actually going to leave it at 100 for this application. But you can change the size of this panel if you ever needed to. And also notice that we have a progressive desktop, mobile, and tablet, of course, just like any responsive design application. This will change with the device that you're using, the web browser reports this to the uh, web server, which in this case be your mid-tier. We're going to ignore tablet and mobile for this demonstration. You guys can play around with that in your devices and your environment if you need to. But for the sake of time, we're ignoring mobile and tablet. It works exactly the same, but we just don't, don't have the time to deal with that today. Uh, and I'm actually going to change this progressive width. Notice how we got 1 through 12. And in PWA... All objects are broken down into a 1 12th width, right? So the screen is broken down into 12 columns, and you could fit one object per row into each column. So there can never be more than 12 objects spanning the, the size of the page, which uh, that would be a lot of objects if you, if you tried to do that. So rarely will you run into a problem with that. And, of course, the visibility. Now, you also have padding as well where you can say, oh, I want one two, three, four, five units of padding around the bottom, top, left, right. You also have a margin where nothing else can be. They work kind of like the, the way they, they say they do. You can also include images as well if you really wanted to. None of that stuff really works for us. We don't use it in, in ITSM virtually at all, so we're not going to worry about that today. I'm going to go ahead and save my forms. That way it saves the changes. All right, so now that these are changes are saved, I want to go ahead and talk one real quick about why we create a custom panel. Um, some of you might be apparent to, but really it just boils down to don't depend upon these out-of-the-box objects always being the same. So just because right now that this is one panel uh, that has you know a panel holder and several other objects in it, doesn't mean it's always going to stay that way. We might move this around because we might need to add another field, or we might need to, uh, instead of making a horizontal layout, we might make it vertical and put something else on the right-hand side. Uh, there's a lot of different things we might end up doing with these forms. And if you put custom objects in here, every time you update, you're going to have to worry about that. And it's just not worth the worry. Just create a new panel for your customization. If you have multiple things, like you want to do an hours module, and then you want to add a schedule module and you want to add, uh, you know, something else, uh, you know, you can add your own panels individually. Uh, you can also change the order by coming up here and looking at your panels and you can see you have 34 defined and you can move things up and down as necessary. Um, and, and that way it can move up the page or down the page as you declare its importance. Um, that's up to you, but I, I really do recommend as a, a best practice for you to create a custom panel with your own objects inside of that panel. Do not be adding objects to out-of-the-box panels. That might change in the future for whatever reason. Even if it's just a visual change, it'll be a pain to have to keep up with that. But uh, the first thing we're going to do here in this panel is, is I really want to talk about uh, go ahead and adding a panel holder. We're going to one of the things here, uh, let's actually go ahead and add this real quick because I'll show you. If we look at the display properties of this. Notice that there's an orientation of horizontal. And we set our um, panel to a width of 12 out of 12. That doesn't mean each object inside of it is going to take up 12. That means the entirety of that panel is going to take up 12. So if you have 15 objects, all 15 objects are going to take up 12. And it always stacks uh, everything on top of it. And we want this to look good. Uh, it's part of the, the appeal of PWA, right, is you get uh, get responsive design and you get a better look and feel of things. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we created this panel. It is a horizontal layout, meaning all of the things are going to be stacked horizontally. Um, and we actually need to go ahead and add one, two more panels to this. And you can see them represented here, but this doesn't look good. And could we leave it like this? We absolutely could. No reason why we couldn't. Uh, uh, PWA is smart enough to just figure this out at runtime. But I'm actually going to go ahead and change a couple of display properties here just to kind of make it easier to work with for us. And I'm going to go ahead and change the initial size of these 
to 200 instead of 100. And there we go. I'm also going to go ahead and change uh, the names and get that uh, organized here. So I'm going to speed through that so you don't have to worry about it. All right, so I have all of the uh, panels inside the panel holder all named appropriately. We're going to have three fields that we're inevitably going to put in here. One for the required amount of hours to complete the ticket, one for the hours that we reported, and then one for the hours that are remaining. And we're just going to do some simple math to kind of calculate all these things. Um, now that I got that set, we have our initial size set to 200. We also need to go ahead and change our progressive desktop options. Once again, we're going to ignore mobile and tablet for now. Uh, just not enough time to deal with that. Um, progressive width, we're going to go ahead and set that to uh, not 12 out of 12, actually. We're going to say it to 14, 4 out of 12, rather, because um, 3 times 4, 12. Uh, so this will be one-third of the page uh, individually. And we're, they're all set to true by default. We will eventually probably play with that maybe, uh, just so that way we can uh, you know, see what it might look like. Um, we could go ahead and save, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and create a integer field in each one of the panels. All right, and now each one of these has a integer field. Uh, once again, I'm going to go ahead and name all the fields really quickly, and I'll fast forward through that so you don't have to, you know, sit through that. All right, so now we have all of the uh, fields named appropriately. Um, you'll notice that I just named them basically the same thing as we have for our panels that we we're putting them in, uh, required, reported, and remaining. Um, and we're going to change a couple of display properties. These first thing, this actually I don't want it to be an optional field. I want it to be a display only field. Um, saves me in some database space. I don't need that. Plus, we're going to you know get some workflow to do this for us. Um, also, I'm going to change the read write functionality to read only. This is our view view, so um, we won't be editing anything here. Uh, also want this to be display as text. I do not want this to be display as a as a big edit box. And um, I actually want to get rid of the numeric spinner. This is just the uh, uh, up and down arrows that allow people to select it. Um, people aren't used to that anymore. Uh, people just want to free type into a, a field what they want to put. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to change that here for all of these really quickly. And there we go. So now we have all the properties changed for all three fields. They are read only. Uh, they are display as text and they are uh, an editable type field, uh, not a spinner. Um, now required and reported are both set to optional still because I want that data to actually be saved in the database. I do not want uh, to have to have the user enter that every single time they open up the ticket. At this point, I can go ahead and I can save the form, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and flush my mid-tier cache, let it reload, and uh, I'll fast-forward through that, and I'll see you in PWA. All right, so we got our mid-tier cache flushed out, and all that's done. So I have a test ticket here, and we're going to go ahead and open this. It's just a blank incident that doesn't have uh, much in it, anything in it. And you'll see here we have our three new fields, uh, required hours, reported hours, and remaining hours. Now, they're a little bit off-center. This is probably due to some of the, the differences in the field. We'll correct that here in just a little bit once we start looking at everything. And you'll see how um, some of these other fields are set. So you have operational category, then you have the value set. Um, so uh, ours currently doesn't have any value set. This is an integer field, so it'll act a little bit different than these text fields do. Um, but once again, it's just a basic change to kind of demonstrate where this is. You also notice this is kind of close to this bottom. It doesn't have um, the padding necessary. We can look at some of these other fields, to, these other panels, to see what their padding looked like and kind of duplicate this as well. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go back to Dev Studio. We're going to review some of these things, and we're actually going to go ahead and move these changes to some of our other views because we don't just want this on the view view. We want this on the create and the edit view as well, and we want it to function a, a specific way. So let's uh, flip over there real quick.
All right, so we're back in Developer Studio now, um, and we're on our SV view, and we have our three fields here that we created and, and the panels and everything. Um, the next thing we're really going to want to do is to get these fields propagated to our SV edit and our SV create views. Uh, that'll be the most important thing for right now. But there is a little bit of a, a catch here. Um, notice that the uh, field ID for our um, um, panel holder here is ends in 271. Um, and our custom panel that we created has a parent field of 271, right? So that's the parent to, to this child. Um, and because of this, if we try to migrate this panel over, it's going to complain. Uh, it's going to say, oh, you don't have the parent. My, you don't have my parent on this other, this other view. So uh, when I go to SV Edit, and let's just you know, click here so we can pull all this up. You know, 481 is the field ID here. And if I go to the SV Create as well uh, and look at that, it is 481 as well. So we're going to have to create the uh, parent and children uh, correctly for this on the SV Edit and the SV Create view. But we really only have to create it on one of the two views. And then we can just propagate our changes to uh, uh, the other one using the uh, add fields to view option. So let me go ahead. I'm going to, on the SV create, I'm going to go ahead and create the panel and the panel holders uh, just like we did in the view. Uh, and once I get that done, we'll come back again. All right, so we got all this created now, and um, we have this field. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save the field on the, the form. This is on the create view. Um, shouldn't take too long to come back. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you a little bit of a trick here. So the first option, uh, you can come over to the SV Edit, and you can create a uh, view overlay and then add, remove the fields in view, and you'll get this nice little wizard that comes up that has all the fields not in the view and then the fields in the view. And we can come down here to our Z2PL, uh, um, let's see here, Z2PL custom, here it is, custom create edit hours, right? So I created a whole new panel, and you can move this over. Uh, the, the view has to be overlaid for that to happen, but I don't, I'm not really going to use this, this option because what I'm going to do here is in this view, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this field to view overlay because this, once again, has to be overlaid for this to work. And then you're going to come back here. You're going to click on the new field that we just created. Go to views. It has one view currently defined. And I can actually just go ahead and add this field to my SV edit view. And when I come over here, uh, you're going to see right here, SV custom create edit hours is now present. When, when this saves, it, it'll, it'll force the change. Um, that'll be fine though, but the tab view will need to come down to the bottom, which is where we're going to want it to be. And this particularly doesn't matter for that. Um, otherwise you can go ahead and save the form. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this save. I'm going to go ahead and get the other objects moved over as well. And once that's done, come back. All right, so I went in and got this moved over. And um, one of the things I noticed here, because this didn't actually move over very well, actually. Um, and I wanted to actually show uh, some of the problems that you might come, up, come in contact with. And this is a really easy fix. So notice that my custom hours panel and my or my panel holder and my panels and my fields show up here right next to the create ticket text. That's not where we want it to be, right? We want it to be inside of our new panel that we created specifically for this view. And panel holders or, or panels rather have a very specific relationship to their panel holders. They have to stay with their panel holder. They can't move. But panel holders can move. They can move just about anywhere. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do this and move field two 
and you can come down here to the bottom where it's supposed to be and here is our SV custom create hours uh, panel that we just created and now we're going to move this to there and there you go our our already existing notice field ID 914 field ID 914 uh, our already existing panels panel holders uh, and our other panels and our fields are now present on the views that we want for this particular uh, 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 form. So uh, a little bit of manipulation to get everything to work, and I think it's important for people to see how to maybe uh, navigate those kinds of challenges. Um, but it's very important to realize that in SV View, Edit, and Create, not everything's going to be the same. And it's specifically made that way because the, the things you need when you're creating a ticket are not the same things you need when you're viewing the ticket or editing the ticket. So it's very important to kind of work around those things to make sure that uh, you're customizing your application in a way that makes sense for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and... Uh, flush our mid-tier cache, and we're going to come back in and look at Smart IT one last time here uh, before we do our very last change. Now that we've fast-forwarded through all the uh, mid-tier cache flushes and the saving of the form and all that good stuff, uh, I want to go ahead. We're back in Smart IT now, and we're going to uh, create new incident. And you're going to see required hours, reported hours, and remaining hours, just like we had expected to see. Uh, this is all good. This is exactly how we want it to be shown, um, for now at least. But now we're running into our next problem. And this will be our last change that we're going to make to this. We're going to go back and fix some things. On the create option, we can't actually enter any hours. Uh, none of these fields are editable. Remember, we left them as read-only. So we're going to go back. And here's going to be our requirement. On the creation of the ticket, we don't even need to see reported hours. We don't need to see remaining hours. We just need to be able to enter required hours. On the view option, we want to be able to see all three but not edit any of them. On the edit option, we want to be able to see all three, but we only want to be able to update reported hours. We don't want to be able to change required hours. Um, and then we're going to create an active link to calculate remaining hours uh, based on a simple subtraction equation of required and reported hours. So we're going to hop back over to Dev Studio. We're going to polish up our work. This is the last little bit of it. And then this will be uh, completed for now. All right, so we're back in Developer Studio now, and I went ahead and made change to these fields for the sake of time. Uh, most of these things, most people are going to be pretty uh, familiar with anyways. Um, notice that uh, what we're going to do here in far as showing and not showing fields, in PWA, you really kind of focus on the panels more than you do the fields. You can also set the fields to be hidden and visible and whatever. But that's just an extra step that's not exactly required and might might require more workflow than necessary in a lot of cases. Um, so it's usually, even if it's marginal, more performant to worry about the panels. Um, and, and we have this panel set to true, which is what we wanted. We want to be able to enter the required hours but you don't really need to see reported or the uh, remaining hours when creating a new ticket. It's just unnecessary clutter on the page. No reason to see that. Um, and of course, in our edit version, uh, you know, you're able to edit the reported hours and remaining hours and required hours you're not. Uh, and, and of course, all of these are set to visible equals true. There's also one thing that you can see here that I changed. Um, in the display properties is uh, the display as text is set to false for fields that are now read, write, editable. Um, this gives a visual indicator to the user. They like seeing that. They know, oh, now I can change this. It's not just an information field for me. There's also, I'm going to go here to the view tab. There's also a change that has been made to the fields. And I did this to, to have some uh, continuity um, and it's small, but it, it's a visually appealing thing where on the fields themselves, I've changed the font from label font, made it an optional field, 
Uh, so that way the font will, will look the same as some of our other options like uh, our assigned to and support groups and things like that. Um, and the data font is a detailed text, right? Uh, so that way the data looks kind of similar and has a little bit different look than the label does exactly. Um, this just gives it, uh, you know, a more polished look. It'll make sure that everything's aligned well and and uh, looks the same as other things on the page. Once again, completely visual. Uh, the last thing I went ahead and did here also is created a uh, active link with a couple of options. It's going to fire on HPD help desk. It has a submit, modify, search, and open window. So that way, anytime you're doing things, it will automatically update the value if you return on the reported field in the, in the edit mode, that'll happen. Also added a run if qualification for the view. So it's gonna be create, edit, view, and the ticket display form. Um, so that way, no matter what view is being showed on the page, it'll only execute in PWA. Uh, that's a little trick to make sure that uh, this isn't executing, causing a problem in classical mid-tier. And all we're doing is a classic set field action on the remaining field where we're, we're subtracting reported from required to kind of calculate that remaining value. Um, all of this has already been saved. Uh, I am going to go ahead and flip over flush by mid-tier cash, and we're going to look at Smart IT one last time for our finished product. All right, and now we're back into uh, Smart IT and in the PWA view. And uh, I went ahead and enlarged the screen, which is something I haven't done yet because we've been kind of working on things. But I want to enlarge it to kind of show maybe a ratio uh, difference here that um, just kind of show how the progressive view kind of works. And, and you'll see here we have our required hours. Notice the font is the same as it is up here. You have uh, your uh, data entry here, same as it is here, same, uh, all, all these other things. Um, and you can clearly see that this kind of fits in with the general aesthetic of what's going on. Obviously, we can change some of the paddings and, and make this space here. Uh, and that's something you can play with on your own uh, in your environment, which will absolutely make this look a lot, a lot more cleaner, a lot more integrated into your system. And if we uh, click on edit, obviously, it's going to pull up. Uh, the edit version, and down here you can uh, change your reported hours to, let's say, uh, five. Now I spent, you know, four more hours working on it, and I'm going to save that. And we're going to come back here, and, you know, oh, you only have seven hours remaining to work on this. Um, once again, it's something very sim simple and, and easy to replicate here. Um, and, and this is a really great tool, once again, uh, for allowing your your information to be seen on multiple screen types and it all kind of look the same it has a much better flow to it a lot less clutter than uh, maybe some of our classic mid-tier users are, are used to and um, ultimately take your takeaway from this should be that it it provides the flexibility of classic mid-tier and be able to add and customize things but it also provides the modern technologies of smart IT and the ability to use on different types of devices, mobile in particular. Um, so it's really important uh, uh, technology that we're investing here at BMC. And um, I hope that everyone kind of learned a little bit here and, and is able to take some of this. And, and we're going to have some questions here in just a moment.